Welcome everybody to the Baking with the Seasons, focusing on um, springtime. Uh, and Pam has got some amazing recipes for, um, for us to learn about. Um, if everybody could uh, put their name and group and um, an email into the chat box, and then we'll take questions throughout um, using the chat box. We're going to save most of the questions to later because Chef Pam has, uh, has a number of recipes that we want to get through today. So just keep them coming and, um, and we'll um, take a few during the um, session, but most of them we'll save uh, until the end. Um, and then as always, we will have the recipes um, uh, available for you. We're working hard with um, with the marketing group, Marlene and Kimberly, to find a, a good space for all of the resources, but we do have resources from all of the sessions we've done so far, including these delicious recipes. So we will get them to you soon. Um, and Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Chef Pam, and uh, and we're going to get started. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome from Concord, Virginia, where I'm in the awesome Mary Lowe kitchen. I know last uh, time I did a session, I did her scones. So here I am in her test kitchen, um, and we are going to do three different uh, recipes today. So I'm going to be on a flying buzz today. Um, so baking with the season, the current season, season brings us citrus, rhubarb, soon to be strawberries, lots of baby goats, which I got to play with recently, um, which means that there's lots of goat milk and lots of goat cheese. So today we're going to make strawberry rhubarb jam, no bake goat cheese cheesecake with a sesame and hazelnut crumble. And lastly, we're going to do a goat cheese ice cream theme, goat cheese. <laughs> I like goat cheese. Okay, the sources for my ingredients, the rhubarb. Two of my bakers, Charles and Peter, were kind enough to share their bounty from their gardens, so it's a beautiful thing. The strawberries obviously aren't quite there yet, so I had to get them from the store. Uh, the goat cheese comes from Thomas Farms in Sunderland, Massachusetts, and I also am using a, um, some cheese from the Vermont Creamery in Websterville, Vermont. Um, there's two, they have two different flavors to them, so I like to combine them. The honey comes from Warm Colors Apiary in South Deerfield, Massachusetts. The flour comes from our new partners from Ground Up in Hadley, Massachusetts. Uh, the milk and the cream come from Maple Line in Hadley, Massachusetts. Okay, a little bit about uh, why I chose these three recipes. Uh, the jam, it's a super easy recipe. And you can do it with pretty much any fruit there is out there. Uh, Clarkdale's in Greenfield has wonderful plums, um, Italian plums. And so I love to use this recipe for that. But any fruit really you can make with this recipe. So it's very versatile. Um, and yeah, so that's why I chose that one. The cheesecake, um, it can be made gluten free. I mean, today I'm going to be using whole wheat flour, which makes it gluten, obviously. But if you prefer to do a different crumble, Without gluten, you can do that, or you don't even have to have a base for it. You can make it base, you know, base free. Um, the other thing is that it's egg free. So I know some people have allergies to eggs, so it's egg free. Uh, it's also not very sweet. The only sweetener that I use in it is some honey. And um, yeah, so the ice cream then is also very quick and very easy. Um, there's no eggs in it again, and it's not very sweet, and also it's very versatile in that um, you can add any sort of flavor in that you want to it. Okay, so let's get started. Awesome, Mary Lowe, come on over to the station. <laughs> okay, here we have the rhubarb. Um, I like to peel my rhubarb when I make the jam just because uh, the, the peeling adds a bit more um, stuff in my jam that I don't like. Um, it's more fiber. Um, so I've peeled mine, but you can leave it on as you wish. The strawberries, I've also added the um, lemon zest into it. You don't have to use lemon zest. It's just a flavor that I like it. It makes it um, really kind of come alive. 
sugar, and vanilla bean. Again, you don't have to use vanilla bean. It's just a flavor that I like, and lemon juice. So let's get started. I have a candy thermometer here, and the jam, uh, the, the um, temperature for jam making is about 220. I like to undercook mine a little bit, makes it a lot um, thinner, if you will, but cook it to however thickness you want and go from there. I will show you, if you don't have a candy thermometer, I can show you what it looks like when you know it's ready. So just get all these ingredients kind of mixed in. Turn up my heat. And I'm going to let this do its thing while I carry on with the show. Come on over. <clears throat> Okay, so we're gonna do the cheesecake next. Uh, this is my, um, my milk, my whole milk, and my salt. Here I have agar agar. Uh, agar agar is a thickener, it takes place of my eggs. Um, it's very great vegan and vegetarian friendly. I'm just gonna sprinkle that over my milk and just set that aside and let it absorb some milk. All right, my butter, I have it cubed already, and um, it's cold. Here goes the butter. The whole wheat flour and the salt. Brown sugar, as I mentioned last time, I like to keep it covered until I'm ready to use it just so it doesn't get hard. Brown sugar, and let's make a crumb. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two different ways to plate up this dessert. Um, you can make it in a spring form pan, or you can make it in individual desserts, little glass jars. I'll show you that later. Um, My whipped cream, or my heavy cream, I've already whipped that up. Uh, it's in the fridge. It's just kind of one more step that I'm saving myself. And we'll go from there. Stir this here real quick. Make sure we're not burning on the bottom. Yeah, perfect. So last time I gave you recipes in pounds and ounces. Today I'm using all grams. If you notice, my recipe is all in grams. Again, that's why it's great to have a nice scale um, because it will help you to have recipes that come out the same every single time. What I'm looking for, come on over, awesome Mary Lou. <laughs> so Mary Lou is actually my sister, my big sister, one of my big sisters. And I'm so happy to be here with her and her husband. So what I'm looking for is um, kind of a breadcrumb type situation. Um, obviously I don't want all my uh, butter to be melted. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there. Take a look, see what we've got here. This is a nice texture here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this out. I've doubled the recipe here. That's what, um, you can half this recipe. I've doubled this recipe because I wanna show it to you um, two different ways here. So I'm going to do 200 grams in this small six inch 
So Chef Cam, just to oh, be um, clear, you don't want it to be in there for too long because you don't over. want the butter to get too soft. Is that right? Correct. And I got ahead of myself. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Um, I forgot to add my hazelnuts and my sesame. I was wondering, it looked a little bit lacking. Got ahead of myself. So yeah, you don't want your butter to melt too much. Your, um, the sesame and the hazelnut um, are put in at the very end. I chopped up the hazelnuts earlier. All right, that looks better. Are they roasted? No, they are um, raw because they're gonna go into the oven and get toasted that way. All right, this makes more sense. Okay. 200 grams into, all right, clean up my mess. And then the other 200 grams, I'm just going to um, put aside. Normally I would just put it into um, a greased, I'm gonna spray a sheet pan and just put the crumble on there and um, bake it for about 15 minutes at 375. But I've already done that yesterday in my pre-work, so I'm gonna set this one aside. In the meantime, um, so I just kind of evenly disperse it in the bottom of my pan, right? And then I'm gonna give myself a side wall. I've lined this pan with some parchment and I've sprayed it with some pan spray. I'll do up the sides as well on the pan. All right, and into the oven, 375. That's gonna take about 18 minutes. I'm gonna check on my jam over here. It's looking good. As you can see, it's a lot more liquid down there. So I noticed those are pretty big chunks, Chef Cam. Is that because you're going to mush them down later, or it's just a chunky version of the jam? I like a chunky version, but um, they will cook down pretty well. Um, but I do like a, a chunky jam, um, which is why I've left some bigger chunks in here. Great. OK. Next up for our cheesecake. I've got my goat cheese ice cream here. Hang on, getting ahead of myself again. I need this bowl back. All right, in the bowl, I've got my two different kinds of goat cheese. I have my orange zest. This is the vanilla bean. You don't want to put the whole vanilla bean in there. I just put it here to show you. So it's a half of a vanilla bean. I've scraped the pods or the seeds out of the pod. My cream cheese, vanilla bean, then my honey. Put this on the mixer and I'm going to whip it. Chris Hallen really loved this recipe. This was um, a competition piece that I, I don't know, this is one of my things that I just came up with. Um, but it's really, really nice and light and airy. But the thing is, you have to really whip your ingredients. So lots of incorporating lots of air to it. All right, I'm gonna let that one do its thing. That vanilla pod, I'm actually gonna bring back out and I'm gonna put it in my milk. And I'm gonna, the milk and agar, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my 
handy dandy little stove over here. The jam is starting to bubble, so that's a beautiful thing. We, away, have jam. we have a question yes. about um, rhubarb. Does it matter if it's uh, red or green? Um, I know you peeled yours, but um, there is a question about you know what you should be looking for in rhubarb. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. However you want to use it. Um, you know, it looks red before you peel it. Once you peel it, it's kind of green on the inside. Um, that's been my experience, at least with this batch. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, completely up to you. All right. Could you substitute uh, vanilla extract for the vanilla bean? We could, yes. So it tends to get wound up here in your whip attachment. So just make sure you're getting that out. Scrape it down so you don't have any chunks. And back over here to the milk. So um, the agar, again, like I said, you want to whip as much air into this cheesecake as possible. That's the beautiful thing about it is how airy it is. So my agar and milk, I will whisk until it comes to a boiling point. Any other questions coming on? So I notice it's bubbling around the edges. You don't want it to come to a full boil, but you want to see those bubbling around the edges. Is that right? I do want it to come to a boil okay. to make sure that the agar is um, cooked. Okay. Um, but the, the bubbles that you're seeing right now is the air that I'm incorporating into it. Again, I want to incorporate as much air into this recipe as possible. What a beautiful smile. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Y'all, it smells so good. This jam. I'm really getting the notes of the um, the orange, or sorry, the lemon zest really coming through um as well as the strawberries it's such a nice smell so is that thickening up is that what the agar agar does? It does, it thickens it, yes. Okay. The other reason why I like to use agar in competitions 
is because it sets so quickly. Um, so that's, this is kind of my little secret tool in my toolkit, if you will. Um, when I do competitions at the, for the chef's conference, you'll often find me using agar because it sets up so quickly. So I'm able to make ice cream to set up really quickly for the time that I have for my, um, I made kulfi actually one year and it has the agar in it so I was able to set up very quickly. Um, and again, this cheesecake I made for competitions. Um, of course, you have a very tight window for competition. It's boiling perfect. You have a very tight window for competition. So I'm gonna make sure that it sets up in time to go before the judges. And yeah, my secret little tool, or ingredient rather. So scrape it down. Um, the orange zest tends to get stuck on the wire. And again, you don't have to use orange zest, but you know, we're in the season of citrus right now, so that's why I chose to use the orange zest. Um, very versatile, you can use whatever you want. All right, so now in a steady stream. About half of it in there. Again, I want to scrape it down to make sure that I have no chunks. See how thick it's already gotten? All right, turn up this one. I want to make sure I have chunks, so I'm going to scrape down the bowl. All right, I've mixed my uh, heavy cream up, like I said earlier, to whipped cream. Yes, Alyssa, I'm sorry, I know I don't have my gloves on. Is the speed of the, of the mixer important or uh, it doesn't really matter? Uh, yeah, you want to try and get incorporate as much air. When you're adding the milk to it, you want to add it in slowly, obviously, so you don't want to splatter the milk everywhere, but then you want to get it kind of um, sped up. All right, so um, I'm going to add my heavy cream in in thirds. So the first third, I use a whisk, a big balloon whisk, to fold my cream. The base is not going to be done in time for this, but that's all right. I have one made yesterday. I'll show you what it looks like. And the final third.
I'm at just below 200 right now with the jam. So if my base were done, I would fill up the pan, but I don't. So I'm going to show you now. Um, Do you need to let the crust cool before you put the filling yes. in? Okay. The crust needs to be completely cooled. Okay. All right. So, um, and again, I'll, I've got one set up already, so I'll show you, you that at the end. Um, but you can do individual desserts. The thing is that this sets up really quickly, so you have to work pretty quickly with it because of the agar. All right, and then this will go into the mold. And I'll clean off the edges before I put it in the refrigerator. I'm gonna let it set up in the refrigerator um, and then I'll top it with some crumble afterwards. All right, look at that bubbling away. We are just below 200 degrees. It looks beautiful. My base is done. What's the temperature you're looking for, Pam? Um, it really depends what how thick you want it to be. Here's the base. It really depends on how thick you want it to be. The um, temperature for jam making is 220. I like to take mine a little bit below just because it gets really thick. Mm -hmm. All right, let's switch this out. And let's start on the ice cream. All right, I've got food processor going here. Where do I put my, this is uh, the two different kinds of cheese. And the salt was in there, the sea salt. Let me put this over here so I don't forget it. Uh, and then I've got my milk, my heavy cream, corn syrup, sugar, and the slurry, the cornstarch. I took a little bit of the milk that's gonna go in here and made a slurry out of it. And the two cheeses are cream cheese and goat cheese? Yes. Ice cream. All right. So I'm gonna bring this mixture to a boil and then um, I will add my slurry into it and bring it back up to a boil and boil it for two minutes. So with this ice cream, again, it's very easy, very quick. Um, you can make it the next day. You can put it in your fridge, chill it the next day. You can make it the same day. Um, but the important thing is to make sure that you have an ice bath going 
your ice bath, obviously your ice um, bath bowl is bigger than your bowl itself. But you want to chill it quickly and then you can put it in your um, ice cream maker and spin it. So where are we with the jam? We're still hovering below 200. How am I doing for time, Kathy? You're doing great. You got, it's 1032, plenty of time. All right. Oh my Lord, y'all. Ah, uh, looks so this good. smells so good. And I can tell you from experience that it tastes amazing. <laughs> All right, so I had my cornstarch in here last night, I'm trying to scale everything yesterday. Um, and I put my milk in the cornstarch just to kind of help it start to absorb that liquid. I guess I can turn this off. Cause it's mighty hot. Okay. And now we wait for this to come to a boil. And while I wait for that, I'm gonna get the ice tray out and set up for my ice bath. Any questions coming my way yet? Please feel free to submit any questions you have so far. Sorry, I'm going to make a lot of noise. Mute me, Mute me for just a minute. Okay, sorry. That was really loud, so I wanted to mute it. <laughs> all that noise in your ears. All right, any questions? Not right now. Okay. So when I do this jam, I put the hot jam directly into the jars and get the lids on there as quickly as possible. Um, and that goes ahead and it seals the um, jars. But if you want to make doubly sure and you're concerned that your um, seal is not solid enough, you can boil. So bring a, a big stock pot of water to boil and then put your jars in there and boil it for 10 minutes bring them out this should make about four four ounce jars What I like to do um, is what they also tell you when you're making jams, jellies, or anything canning wise, is make sure you wipe off the rim really well first um, so that there's no um, issue with the seal. So here's a question that's just come in. Um, will the jam store well if it isn't sealed in a jar? Uh, if, it, if your jar does not seal, then you'll need to put it in the refrigerator. 
Thank but you. if you want to keep it on the shelf, you'll need to make sure that it's sealed properly. And you can hear it. You know, you'll start to hear it pop. The center will pop down so you know it's sealed. And it also doesn't have like a give to it, right? Mm -hmm, correct. So right now, it has that give. So when it seals, you'll hear it go pop and it holds it down. So then when you when you push on it, it won't it won't make that noise. Great, thank you. So we had this ice cream last night for dessert. It was really good. Um, the same jam I made it the other day at home uh, and I brought a jar with me. And so my sister had the ice cream to begin with um, just by itself. And I said, here, try a little bit of jam on your ice cream. And she's like, oh, this is really nice. So, um, if you notice, and speaking of jam, you notice it's still kind of chunky in here. I like that. I like a little bit of chunk in my jam. So it still seems pretty, uh, um, like not that thick. Is it, is that just a, from this viewpoint, is it really getting thick in there? It's getting there. Um, again, it's, it's still below 200 degrees. So it's still, um, fairly thin, thinner than I want it to be. Um, but again, the longer you cook it, the more it thickens. Great. And, and it just and, and I don't I'm not using any thickeners too. I'm not using pectin or anything like that. Um, it's mainly the evaporation of the water um, that creates that thickness, which again is why I really like this recipe. It's super easy. You don't need to go buy pectin or anything else. It's just it thickens on its own. And you know, depending on on what you use. Say for example, if you use cranberries, cranberry has um, a natural thickener to it, mm. so it has its own natural natural pectin, pectin, if you will. Um, for the um, ice cream, are you heating that on low or? No, I'm heating it on high. Okay. Um, but it's just not moving very quickly. I, um, I think the pan is a little bit thicker than the one I used yesterday. Mm -hmm. But it's getting there, it's heating up. Great. So in the meantime, let me look at my base here. All right, so this is cooled well enough. So come on over, man. So my base here, um, as you can see, it's already starting to set the cheesecake base, but that's fine. It's gonna stir it a little bit, loosen it up, and it'll thicken back up again. Uh, I like to go straight into the freezer with it um, because it sets it really quickly. So into the freezer we go. And then obviously before you serve it, you'll want to pull it out and let it um, thaw. Just go from the freezer to the fridge. So the filling for the cheesecake can go up above the crust. Yes. Okay. And again, that's what I was saying. If you don't want to have a crust, that's completely fine. You don't have to have one. It'll still uh, come out just fine.
did a test run on all this yesterday and it moved a lot faster. <laughs> Not quite as hot today. So this is heating up. I'm gonna go ahead and add my slurry in here. I know I'm rushing this, but I'm in the hopes that it will go ahead and do its thing before our show is over. And we're still doing fine on time, so. Oh, okay. So yeah, normally I would um, let this come up to a boil and then I would add my slurry into it and then cook it for an additional um, two minutes to let the, the starch and the cornstarch cook out. So as you can see, it's getting nice and thick. Remember earlier when I started, it was fairly watery. This is getting much thicker already. And if you don't want your jam to be quite as sweet, you can cut back a little bit on the sugar. That looks amazing. What we are getting there. <laughs> it's getting close to the thickness that I like it to be. I generally only cook mine to about 200. Right now we're sitting. Do you hold it at 200 for a certain period of time or as soon as it gets to 200, you shut it down? Um, I make sure that it's well in the uh, 200 mark, um, but then I also go, I guess I go a little bit further than 200. The last one I went to was 200, but my pan was a bit different too. So um, the thing is, is when it's starting to get closer, um, when you draw your spatula through, you'll be able to see the bottom of the pan for a little bit. I mean, right now I'm drawing it through, so I'm not seeing the bottom of the pan. So I'm not quite there, but as soon as you can draw it through and see the bottom of the pan, you're getting close. So again, however thick you like it to be, depends on how, um, how long you cook it. So the more you get to see the bottom of the pan, you can smell it, it'll start to caramelize, it'll have a caramelized smell, um, mm. and it'll just get thicker and thicker. So in the meantime, while I wait for this ice cream to do its thing, um, Mary, I'm going to ask you to just kind of keep an eye on it from the camera end over there, but I'm going to do um, a plating of the cheesecake. So this is the second way I was going to show you how to do the cheesecake plating. All right, so. And to get that nice, out huh? of the pan, was there a trick to that? Or you just? Um, no, I, so I took it out of the freezer this morning, uh, early this morning and um, put it in the refrigerator. Actually, no, I put it in the refrigerator last night um, before I went to bed, but I pulled it out while it was still nice and cold. And then um, 
I just immediately popped it out and it came out no problem. Perfect. So, so. all right, let's cut into this bad boy and what? As soon as it starts boiling, rolling boil. You call in. Okay, so we'll start with the individual desserts first. Um, these are the little jars that I made. And if you notice, this is the uh, crumb topping that I was told you I just made. I laid out the crumb topping on a sheet pan, baked it off, um, and then just turned it and came up with some nice crumb topping. So you do one of two things. You can just serve it with the crumb by itself. You can add a little extra sweet to it. Put some honey on there, a no crumb option, if you will, or if you want to do the crumb, add a little crumb. The jam, this is the jam that I made the other day. See how thin it is? Um, so it's the other thing, a little jam in there, either no crumb, gluten-free or crumb, your option. Then for the plated dessert, you got one there. You got one there. And again, um, so that one actually came out clean and cut, but that's right. Um, so depending, again, this is very versatile. You can do whatever you want for topping for it. Just do some fresh fruit, if you will. Add some nice fresh berries there, good to go. Wow. The comments are that looks amazing. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm at a boil. I've been boiling for a little bit here on the milk. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and do my cheese. This has been boiling for a good two minutes. And then I'm going to slowly pour the milk. That fast, guys. And in my ice, I'm gonna put some cold water. Mm 
do your thing, baby. How are we looking on time, Kathy? Um, do you put the ice all the way up to the uh, top of the where the liquid is? It looks like um, it. yeah, it's come up. It's it's uh risen up to the top there. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure it sits all the way down into the ice water so that it chills very quickly. And then once this is chilled, um, we'll just put it in your ice cream maker. I have the one that's the insert. My sister has one that's the insert that you put into the freezer. And in 25 minutes, you have amazing ice cream. And again, with the ice cream, sky is the limit as to what sort of um, toppings you want to put on it, fresh fruit or whatnot. All right, I'm starting to get that sort of through the bottom. All right, um, just for the sake of time, because I'm almost out of time here, I'm just going to do up one jar for you. Still not quite there, but close enough. Chunk. So the rhubarb just kind of falls apart. Correct. So again, you know, it really depends on how um, how much fiber you want in your jam. Um, so you can leave the peeling on there. Um, as you can see, there's some fibers from just the rhubarb itself. Um, but the by leaving the peeling on, we get even more fibers. Just make sure that my lid is clear. And then nice and tight. And I'm just gonna set it off to the side and it will make this sound. So, there you have it. There was a bit of a whirlwind, but we've got jam, we've got cheesecake, um, and ice cream. We're going into the hot summer months, and I figured the ice cream would be nice as well as the cheesecake um, because they're nice light desserts. And then, of course, by making the jam, jam is always good on all kinds of things. But I like it on my ice cream and my cheesecake. And uh, all right, so any other questions for me today? Yeah, is there anybody uh, have any more questions? And there is a request to meet your sous chef slash sister. Yes. Come on over here, Mayor. So, Hello, everybody. There's Mayor. I, I can attest to the fact that this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have had a little extra helping last night. So it's <laughs> wonderful. Run, don't walk to the kitchen and get this going. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the ice cream really quick, too, actually. Ice cream, set up nice and hard. Whew, this one's rock solid. All right, I should have pulled out a little bit earlier, but as you can see, we've already um, had a good delving into it yesterday, um, but I should have pulled out a little bit sooner, so it's not quite so hard, but ice cream. Um, this recipe makes um, 32 ounce. And yeah, you can eat, you know, if you need to use it right away, you can microwave it really quick. But that's about that. Check on this jam. Um, one of the questions is uh, I made, but I read people uh, putting salt in the ice water bath. Will that happen? Yeah, that makes it go, um, that keeps it pretty cold too. 
Um, you don't have to. I just use ice and water and then just stir it periodically. Um, this ice cream, again, it doesn't have eggs into it. So um, that temperature danger zone that we are very conscientious of for eggs in particular um, is not here because there are no eggs. Got it. So it's a little bit liquidy now, but the colder it gets, the thicker it gets. So there you have it. We got beautiful desserts, yummy ice cream, jam, happy Amazing. summer, happy eating, happy baking. Enjoy the strawberries when they come out. We'll go from there. Thank you for we your have, time today. Uh, Thanks for joining. We have people volunteering yes. um, to have their kitchen used as the test kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we know, Marlene was able to. Uh, partake in the spoils of the last um, session. So uh, yes, absolutely. We can I'd be happy to do it in somebody's test kitchen. My sister and my brother-in-law are definitely enjoying the spoils from this one. So. <laughs> Great. So, well, thank you, thank you so it. much. And thank you so much, Mary Lou. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And I hope that you have a fantastic mm -hmm. visit, Chef Pam. And, uh, and enjoy. We'll see you. Oh, we we'll see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you